When I was this, it will be nice and just say awkward 12 year old, I loved horror movies. Why? Because in the 70s, I didn't have a lot going on on a Saturday night. Yeah, hard to believe, huh? But on Saturdays, I didn't have a curfew, so I could stay up late. That's when I discovered the greatest TV show ever, Creature Features with Bob Wilkins. Horror movies, monster movies, sci-fi, some were classics, some were terrible, all were entertaining. This was the birthplace of my love for old horror movies, which led to my discovery of the greatest fan magazine of all time, Famous Monsters of Filmland. Universal classics to hammer films. Some were scary and some were gloriously cheesy. And they were all celebrated in the pages of Famous Monsters of Filmland. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm one of the collector guys. And before we get going, I want you to hit that subscribe button. Because we are working on some great videos and we don't want you to miss them. But now in this video, we're going to be talking about Famous Monsters of Filmland and the man behind it. Now, before we get into that, though, we need to know why these old horror movies were so popular on TV back then. And to find that out, we need to talk to this guy, Joseph Botinos, and he really knows a lot about this stuff. In 1954, 55, uh, Screen Gems released their shock theater package, which was their, their package of old horror movies to all the television stations nationwide. It was a, a big deal because this was the first time that any of these movies had been shown uh, on television. So, gosh, we got this great content. We're gonna do it late at night because they're horror movies and it could be scary. And I think some station managers were a little nervous. They said, oh, we're gonna show these movies for the first time. Uh, is this gonna be okay? Are we going too far here? Again, this is 1954, 55. Um, so to alleviate some of that, they hired these people to host them. Joseph knows a thing or two about these hosted movies because he himself is a horror movie host. His alter ego, Professor Anton Griffin. Ladies and gentlemen, take your seats. The presentation is about to begin. Now, let's welcome your host, Professor Anton Griffin. Thank you, Usher, and welcome back, night creatures. If you're brave enough, step through the curtain and experience shock more shattering than your strangest nightmare. Uh, every Friday night at 11 o'clock, Professor Griffin's Midnight Shadow Show came on. Uh, it got a following, and it got bigger, and it got bigger. And One of the things that I did in Houston, I used to design haunted houses. I worked uh, in different areas of Houston uh, for fundraising, charity events and stuff, and, and I, I designed haunted houses. One of the haunted houses I designed uh, was called Professor Griffin's Circus of Horrors. So he was the carnival barker and the haunted house was kind of a theme, like a something wicked this way comes, dark carnival with monsters, real monsters on display uh, and things like that. So that's where the character came from. Okay, so these hosted TV shows made old horror movies more popular back then. And in 1958, to capitalize on this popularity, publisher James Warren and editor Forrest J. Ackerman created Famous Monsters of Filmland. And their target audience, young boys. James Warren, the publisher uh, are, uh, of Famous Monsters, and, and of course, Forey Ackerman, the editor. And James Warren held up an imaginary sign to Forey and said, Forey Ackerman, I am a 10-year-old boy. This is your audience, right for a 10-year-old boy. Don't believe him? Take a look at these pictures in the letters section. I swear I went to elementary school with this guy. Famous Monsters was the OG of horror movie fanzines and a huge part of my childhood. And like any magazine, we're going to start with the covers. Many of which were colorful, dynamic works of art. The original artwork for these are in high demand with collectors. Let's take this issue, number 110. The original cover painting of Boris Karloff's The Ghoul recently sold in a heritage auction for over $84,000. Behind these awesome covers was a plethora of more ghoulish goodness. Each issue was packed with inside stories behind both popular and not so popular movies. Behind the scene photos and sometimes never before seen photos like this deleted scene from King Kong. Pun filled stabs at monsters famous and obscure 
and a crypt full of gloriously entertaining sections geared right to the fans. Like Mystery Photo, where you were challenged to name the obscure movie the publicity still came from. Professor Grubeard, who was more than happy to answer your monster movie questions. You asked for it, where you could send your request to see a photo from your favorite flick. The Critics' Crypt, which reviewed everything in the genre, and I mean everything. And the Graveyard Examiner, which was the official newspaper for the fans, featuring the very latest in monster news. Gave readers a chance to show off their monster makeup, and there was even a quiz to test your horror movie knowledge, which I took. And when you were done reading all the ghoulish goodness, there were the ads in the back. It was one-stop shopping called The Captain's Company. The Captain's Company was James Warren's other money-making scheme in the back of Famous Monsters, where you could pick up, you know, model kits or 8mm films, you know, and order them through the back of the magazine uh, and get them sent to your house, you know. This was really cool stuff. Books, records, masks. Hobby kits were huge. Posters, including Vampirella, the object of every preteen's affection. Black light bulb? Had it. 8mm movies. Remember, this was way before video. How about this giant balloon, which was even reviewed in the Critics' Crypt? Everything a young horror fan could ever want, all at unbelievably low prices, with one handy order form for everything. Many of the things we saw in the back pages of Famous Monsters of Filmland then are highly desirable by collectors today. And hey, we are a YouTube channel about collectibles, so we can't talk about Famous Monsters of Filmland and not talk about Forrest J. Ackerman's personal collection. He was not only the editor-in-chief, monster expert extraordinaire, he was one of the greatest collectors of all time. If there was a Collector's Hall of Fame, it would be named after Forrest. His personal collection is legendary. The man was an incredible collector as well. He had Bela Lugosi's cape and he had the Bela Lugosi's ring, his, one of the Dracula rings. He had all this stuff. He used to haunt the, the actual movie uh, studios and pull out sound discs from Frankenstein, these old stuff, props that were thrown away, like the wolf-headed he, wolf cane that just, they didn't, Nobody, cared, nobody thought about it, like preserving it. They was like, are we done with the movie? And I just tossed that right out. And he was like, oh, I'll take that. You know, I'll take it all. His many artifacts would often grace the pages of famous monsters. It was pictures like these from inside the famous Acker Mansion that led me to become the collector I am today. Back then, I wanted my bedroom to look like the Acker Mansion. Of course, I couldn't have the original armature for King Kong, so instead I filled it with Aurora monster models and spooky blacklight posters. The Acker Museum, or the Acker Mansion, was his home where he had all this stuff, and he would invite complete strangers. People would knock on his door, and he'd be like, oh, come on in, and he would put the Dracula cape on and do the tour. The famous monsters of Filmland that I remember stopped publication in 1983, but if you've never read one, you could find them online for a reasonable price or you can go to FamousMonsters.com. There you will find features, interviews, podcasts, and also galleries featuring those amazing covers we mentioned earlier. Famous Monsters of Filmland was a fanzine that did more than celebrate all things horror, sci-fi, and fantasy. Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine, um, I think, are critical pieces to the puzzle that make up the fabric of fandom. Fandom, in itself, was sort of nurtured by Forey and people like Forey and that magazine where it showed behind the scenes what was going on in the movies. It talked about them in magical ways. It made them special and it grew uh, into a fan community. Building a community for fans everywhere. Promoting collecting. Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine was all of those things. Thanks for watching Collector Guys, but we're not done yet. We've got one last little video for all those Forrest J. Ackerman fans out there. Check it out. Midnight looms before us and the shadows begin to leave. I, Professor Bruno Lombini, have entrusted one man to exhibit these shadows. The mad master of the macabre. Your host and my protege, 
Professor Anton Wood. Join him now as he parts the curtains and invites brave souls into Professor Griffin's midnight shadow.